All right, welcome to a uh, nice little video here we're going to do on uh, inverse functions. Okay, so let's just first talk about an inverse function. Um, and let's do so by starting off by looking at a really simple function, and that is x plus 4. Very easy function. So let's talk about a couple values. So if we plug in 1 for x, do a quick little math, 1 plus 4 is 5. If we plug in 2, 2 plus 4 is 6. If we plug in uh, 8, for example, 8 plus 4 is 12. And let's do one more. Let's choose a negative value. If we plug in negative 3, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. So the inverse function is a function that does the opposite. It will take 5 and give us 1. It will take 6 and give us 2. It will take 12 and give us 8. It will take 1 and give us negative 3. And the way we represent an inverse function is we write the f of x, but we put a little negative 1 right there. It doesn't mean that it's an exponent or anything like that. That's just like the, uh, I guess you could say, international sign for an inverse function. And I'm going to give you the inverse function for this one, and it is x minus 4. And we're going to talk about how easy it is to figure that out. Obviously, I'm assuming most of you can figure out, hey, this one's plus 4, this one's going to be minus 4. And the idea is, if I start with 5, 5 minus 4 gives me the 1. If I start with 6, 6 minus 4 gives me the 2. If I start with 12 as the x, 12 minus 4 gives me the 8. If I start with 1, 1 minus 4 gives me the negative 3. So that's what an inverse function does. So here's x's. Here's the, uh, you know, the function itself, or we call it y. Okay? A regular function goes f from x to y. That's a regular function. And an inverse function works the other way around. Okay, an inverse function takes the y value. Now, it's in an inverse function, it's calling it x. I know that's a little bit confusing, but it's the, uh, it was the y value from the original. Like right here, we're calling it 5 in the inverse function, but in the regular function, it was the y. And then that would give us the x from the original function. So, um, hopefully that makes sense, and that's the whole idea of um, an inverse function. Um, so it kind of works that way, if that makes sense to you. So it kind of takes it in reverse. All right, so um, the next thing I want to do so we understand all this is talk about, you know, let's define a function for the second time this year. A function says each input has exactly one output. Okay, we've mentioned that already. So let me do a quick little example right here. Input and the output we could call y or we could call it f of x. Okay? And for example, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 1 goes to 6, 2 goes to 7, 3 goes to 22, 4 goes to 99. Okay, as long as 1 doesn't go anywhere else, it's a function. 2 goes to 7, 3 goes to 22, 4 goes to 99. As long as 4 doesn't go anywhere else, it's a function. So each input has one output. And let's do one more example here. Let's look at another one here. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 are my inputs. Um, and let's say 2 goes to uh, 3, 4 also goes to 3, 6 also goes to 3, 8 also goes to 3. So again, as long as 2 doesn't go anywhere else, we're a function. As long as 4 doesn't go anywhere else. They're all going to 3, but as long as they don't go anywhere else. So this brings up, that's the definition of a function, this brings up a new definition for us. And it's called a 1 to 1 function. A 1 to 1 function is the definition of a 1 to 1 function is the complete opposite of the definition of function. So it's each output has exactly one input. Okay? So some functions can be one-to-one, -one, but not all of them. A one-to-one -one function is like a special function, you could say, where each input is exactly one, uh, one, where each output is exactly one input. So let's look back to this first example right here that we checked out. Is this one-to-one? -one? Six goes to, so we're not looking at it in reverse. The output of six goes to one. Does it go anywhere else? No, six doesn't go anywhere else. Same with seven, it goes to two, doesn't go anywhere else. 20 tweak, 22 goes to three, doesn't go anywhere else. 99 goes to 4, doesn't go anywhere else. So that is a one-to-one -one function. Over here, this is a function. We already defined this as a function. Each input has an output, but is it one-to-one? -one? Well, 3 goes to 2, 3 goes to 4, so wait a minute. This, the output of 3 has multiple inputs. 3 has the input of 2, 3 has an input of 4, 3 has an input of 6, 3 has an input of 8. 
that's an issue. So this function is not a one-to-one -one function. And we'll say one-to-one. -one. It's not a one-to-one -one function. So you could still be a function, just sometimes you might not be one-to-one. -one. Well, why is this whole idea of one-to-one -one important? Because, uh, that's a nice though, because to be or to have an inverse, for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. Okay, so if a function is not considered one-to-one, -one, then it's not an inverse. It can't, well, it can't have an inverse. It's a function, it just doesn't have an inverse. And the most famous one, well, hold on. The most famous function that um, is a function, it, but does not, it's not one-to-one, -one, hence doesn't have a inverse, is x squared, or actually any quadratic for that matter. And let me explain. Let's look at the input and the outputs. Plug in one, I get one. Plug in two, I get four. Plug in negative one, I get one. Plug in negative two, I get four. So each input has one output. One goes to one, doesn't go anywhere else. If I plug in one, I'm always going to get the one back, never any other value. When I plug in two, I get four. When I plug in two, I'm never going to get anything other than four. That would, that's what makes it a function. But here's the issue. The output of one has two different inputs, one and also negative one. The output of four has two inputs, two and negative two. That's why this function is not one to one and therefore does not have an inverse. So any quadratic, actually any even degree, so x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, is not have a function, okay? So let's take a look at some, va some, some examples now. So now we want to get into some examples of finding a inverse. So f of x equals 5 minus 3x divided by 2. And I can't wait to explain how easy it is to find the inverse of a function. The first step, you might want to jot these steps down, the first step is to turn the f of x into a y. Because remember, f of x and y really are the same thing. All right, the second step is to switch the x's and y's. So the y becomes an x, and the x becomes a y, because that's the idea of an inverse. Remember, we're having the outputs become the inputs. Okay, so we're switching the x's and y's. And now your goal is to solve for the y. So to get that y by itself, the first thing I'm going to do is multiply 2 on each side. That way these 2's cancel. 2 times x is 2x equals 5 minus 3x, or 3y, sorry, 3y. Next, I've got to get rid of this positive 5 by subtracting 5. 5 minus 5 cancels out. I get 2x minus 5 equals negative 3y. Final step to getting y by itself is to divide both sides by negative 3. So I get 2x minus 5 all divided by negative 3 is y. Once you're done with that, so first step was switch the f of x to a y. Second step was switch the x and y's around. Third step is to actually solve for y. And the final step is because you switched it around and solved, you just found an inverse function. So the inverse function of 5 minus 3x divided by 2 is 2x minus 5 all divided by negative 3. Final answer, very, very easy. Let's take a look at a, oh, i got to move over the other way. Let's take a look at another problem here, okay? Next one we're going to take a look at here, this will be number two, is the function negative 4x minus 9. First step, change the f of x to a y. Easiest step ever. Get a nice easy point for that. Uh, the y becomes an x, and the x becomes a y. And now I solve. How do I solve for this y right here? first step would be to add 9 to both sides. So I get x plus 9 equals negative 4y. Last step would be to divide both sides by negative 4. Those cancel. I get y equals x plus 9 all divided by negative 4. Final answer. I just switched the x's and y's and I solved, which means I found an inverse. The inverse function of negative 4x minus y is x plus 9 all divided by negative 4. Boom, 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 done. How easy was that? And I'm probably moving you guys all around here. Okay. 
So let's see here. Number three. Let's take a look at another one here. Number three. The function is the square root of 2x minus 7. So first step, change that f of x to a y. And I got 2y minus 7. Uh, I'm sorry, 2x minus 7. I just got a little bit ahead of myself there. So <laughs> sorry for the way that looks. The second step is to change the y to an x and the x to a y. So that becomes a 2y minus 7. Now I've got to solve for the y right here. First step is to square both sides in order to get rid of the square root. Squares and square roots cancel out. So x squared equals 2y minus 7. Add 7. Add 7. x squared plus 7 equals 2y. Divide both sides all by 2. And I get x squared plus 7 all divided by 2 is my y. So since I switched all the x's and y's around and solved, I now have an inverse function. The inverse function of x is x squared plus 7 all divided by 2. All right, I want to do another example here and show you why a quadratics are not, do not have inverses. So if I did something like 3x squared minus 2. I'm telling you that quadratics do not have inverses because there's two different, va two different inputs create the same output. But let's show you real quick what would need to be done to, so you fully understand this. Um, again, I'm just going through the solving process that we did in all the other problems. I'm going to add 2. I'm not showing all my work here, but hopefully you're understanding it all. I'm going to divide the entire side by 3. Now at this point, I'm going to take the square root. And you guys were taught that any time you add the square root to the problem to solve, you've got to put that plus or minus in front. Now, this says that y is the absolute, or I'm sorry, the square root of x plus 2 all divided by 3. But there's a plus or minus in front of here, which means that if you have an input, you could get two different outputs. An input can give you two different outputs. Because if I plug in a value like 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 3, the square root of 3 is 1, but it would be plus or minus 1. So there would be two outputs plus or minus, and having two outputs is not a function. So that's why squares or quadratics do not have inverses, because the inverses are not functions. All right, and we're going to do one more problem, and it's the hardest type of problem. So that's why I want to spend a little bit of time on These are the toughest type of inverses to find right here. So sorry, I just kind of ignore this down here for now. I just needed the room. Okay, here's the function right here. This is the toughest types. So this is the one that anybody's going to struggle with. So you've got to learn how to do it now, practice it, understand it, and follow the rules, follow the steps, and you'll be okay. All right x plus 3 all divided by 2x minus 5. Let's follow the rules. y becomes the f of x. Nice and easy. Okay. Now I'm going to switch the x's and y's. So, so far, nothing too complicated. Everything has been staying the same as it's been. Now the problem is this. I now have to solve for y, but I have two y's. One here and one here. So I have to somehow <laughs> turn two y's into one y show you. It's really not that hard. Treat this as x over 1 and cross multiply. Or you can look at just multiplying both sides by 2y minus 5. If I multiply both sides by 2y minus 5, that was the bottom, these cancel. And I get, I'm going to distribute this x here, ready? I get 2xy minus 5x equals y plus 3. Now what I'm going to do is I want to get anybody with the y on the left side, anybody without a y on the right side. So I'm going to add the 5x over. He does not have a y, so he's going to go over here. I'm going to bring this y over to the other side by subtraction. So I end up getting 2xy minus the y brought over, and then I end up getting 5x plus 3. So one more time, the negative 5x went this way. And how did I do that? I had to add it. That's why it's a 5x over here. The y went this way. I had to subtract it. That's why I get 2x minus y. Now, on the left-hand side here, I notice that both of these terms have a y. So I'm going to factor that y out. And I get 2x minus 1. Check with distribution. If I would distribute, I'd have 2xy minus y. So it really is the same thing. And now the final step 
is to solve for the 1y, because remember I had 2, now I have 1, by dividing both sides by 2x minus 1. Those will cancel. So y equals 5x plus 3, all divided by 2x minus 1. Since I switched my x's and y's and solved, I now have an inverse function, and the inverse function of this original function right here is 5x, that's a nice star, wasn't it? Is 5x plus 3, all divided by 2x minus 1. That's probably about as hard as it's going to get. So you might want to watch that, replay that a couple times, and try to understand what I did so you're ready to do a couple problems like that in class. All right, enjoy your weekend. Talk to you guys later.